Happy New Year. In October of last year there was a drama between AA and others, and I wanted to make a video about it. However, personal stuff got in the way, and I had to constantly delay the video. This is why I have been gone from YouTube. I understand that this video is very late, but I still wanted to give my take on the drama and think that what I have to say is important. Thank you. There has been a great controversy surrounding a video academic agent made about a certain fetish on the internet which involves men licking the abs of women. In his video, Zoomers are Coomers, A expressed anger at the modern degeneracy of the West and advocated for a return to traditional gender roles. This sparked massive pushback from the anti-SJW centrist community. The drama then grew into a fight between Adam Friended and PSA Sitch versus AA, in which Adam and Sitch responded to AA's video on a stream and made a bunch of bad arguments against it. Adam and Sitch argued that the state should not infringe upon people's freedom to live their lives however they want, and if men want to lick women's abs, then they should have the freedom to do so. In return, AA started making videos responding to the stream. In light of the controversy, I tweeted the following, quote, The thing with Adam Friended, PSA Sitch, and Short Fat Ataku is that they all never question the value of freedom and liberty as a concept. They just take it for granted that liberty is good and authoritarianism is bad. We need to attack the idea of liberty itself. This triggered Sitch, and in his anger, he took a screenshot of my tweet and said, quote, Academic agent fans over here, unironically giving the evil Loki speech, from the first Avengers movie, close quote. This caused a firestorm of rage from the centrist community on the internet. Adam even retweeted the Sitch tweet, an actual justice warrior also retweeted Sitch. In this video, I want to double down on my tweet and talk about why Adam and Sitch are wrong about liberty. Before I even start, I will grant Adam and Sitch that my use of the word attack was the wrong word. I should have used a word like debunk or question, and I will accept as valid criticism that my use of the word attack may have caused Adam and Sitch to have an overly emotional reaction to my tweet. With that out of the way, I still stand by that tweet, and I want to explain why. The mistake of Adam Sitch and Short Fat Ataku is that they take it as given that liberty is a good thing. They never think to stop and ask themselves why they value freedom and why freedom is so important. They just take it for granted that liberty is good and authoritarianism is bad. But I see no reason not to question this view. If Adam and Sitch were to subject the idea of liberty to philosophical examination, they would have to look at their first principles and the metaphysics of liberty. This is important because they implicitly believe that freedom is an absolute moral good and authoritarianism is an absolute moral evil. They treat freedom as the ultimate goal. However, they never examine deeply what freedom actually is and its metaphysical implications. True freedom is a very radical thing and it is very bad for anyone who gets it. Freedom is, in its most pure form, the freedom from any and all limitations on human action. It is complete lack of limitation of any type. Freedom is the absence of anything and everything that is preventing a person from doing what they want. Going into the molecular level, this includes not only the state, but also the physical world and form itself. 
Adam and Sitch may not understand this, but freedom is, at heart, the freedom from everything and anything that limits your options for acting in the world. And this includes reality itself. For Adam and Sitch to be totally free, they have to be unlimited in every possible way. And they cannot be any particular way. This is my first problem with the idea of liberty. In order for Adam, Sitch, and Short Fat Ataku to exist as humans, they have to give up some of their freedom. In order to have freedom, a person cannot have any physical, concrete existence at all. In order for Adam, Sitch, and Short Fat Ataku to be human, they cannot fly, live underwater, or other things humans cannot do. In order for Adam Friend to be a human, he has to give up the freedom to be a dog. In order for Sitch to be a human, he has to not be a cat. In order for Short Fat Ataku to be a human, he has to not be a fish. For a cat to be a cat, it cannot be a dog, human, bird, or anything other than a cat. This means that if you are born as something, then you are committed to the limits of the form. As a result, pure freedom means that you have zero form. If Adam and Sitch are trees, they have limits. If Adam and Sitch are dogs, they have limits. The only thing in the universe that has no limits is nothingness or emptiness. This, in my humble opinion, is a problem for anyone who thinks that respecting liberty is an absolute moral necessity. In order to even be in the world, Adam Sitch and Short Fat Ataku have to have limits on freedom. If we had a magic button that gave people absolute freedom, and PSA Sitch were to press the button, he would become nothing. What needs to be understood about freedom is that it would kill Sitch if he were to get it in the absolute form. In order for Sitch to be something, he has to give up some of his freedom. While Adam and Sitch may push back and say that they don't want total freedom of the kind that I am talking about, and say that I am attacking a strong man, this is a problem for anyone who values liberty as a first principle. If Adam and Sitch were gods, and they had their pro-liberty morality, then it would logically follow that they would want to create a world where nobody would ever have limits. But such a world would be a world without any form or physical concrete existence. If total freedom would result in non-existence, then in my opinion, freedom cannot be an absolute moral good. Adam and Sitch may not hold this view that we should want total freedom, and I will concede that this is a possibility, but total freedom is what you get when you follow classical liberal morality to its logical conclusion. As a result, the metaphysical implications of liberty as a concept are still a problem for anyone who thinks liberty is an absolute moral good. If you want something to exist, then you must be okay with limits on reality. So from this point on, everything that I will say will be within the limits of reality. The only question will be how much limits are we willing to have within our reality which has limits. Now I want to get to the core of my disagreement with Adam and Sitch. The idea of liberty is not only crazy from a metaphysical point of view, but it also does not make logical sense. In this part of the video, I want to lay out my logical way of thinking about liberty that has caused me to abandon the concept of liberty entirely. An evil thing is by definition bad. So we should want fewer evil things in the world. If X is evil, we should want X 
to be less in the world. If X is evil and we want less of X, then anything that makes more of X is also evil. If Y makes more of X, then Y is also evil. If Y is evil, then we should want less of Y. The concept of individual liberty permits people to do things that are evil. If we want less evil, then anything that creates greater evil is also evil. Think about porn. Porn is evil. The YouTuber Settlers Lament did a good video about this. If porn is evil, then we should want less porn in the world. If this is the case, then anything that creates more porn is also evil. If the idea of liberty allows people the freedom to make porn, then the idea of liberty is creating more porn. If the idea of liberty is creating more porn and porn is evil, then the idea of liberty is also evil. Even if you don't have a moral issue with porn, this logic works for anything that you think is evil. If X is evil and Y creates more of X, then Y is also evil. It is this simple. Everyone believes this at some basic level. This is why we have laws banning things that wider society sees as so destructive for society that they should be banned. The reason we have laws against murder is not because we think we can stop all murders, but rather to make it harder for murders to happen. Murder is evil, so we criminalize murder to make it less common. If we can apply this logic to murder, then let's extend it to porn, abortion, drugs, and other social ills. Before I end this part of the video, I want to address three arguments that Adam and Sitch will likely have against me. One, you can't put morality into law. Why should your morality be enforced and not the morality of the woke left? It is because someone's morality is going to be enforced. So it might as well be the morality I feel the most at home with. If opposition to our enemies does not enforce its morality, then our enemies will. So we might as well enforce our morality. Two, virtue requires liberty, and people need to make the voluntary choice to be virtuous, or the action is not genuine and as a result, not actually good. If someone is being good because they are forced to be good, then they are not actually good. Yes, I will agree that if a person wants to be evil but is not evil only because the law says so, then the person is not really a good person. However, there is still value in prevention of evil actions, and we should have legislation of morality as an extra wall against evil. Third, under liberty, people can also be good, and authoritarianism can prevent people from being good as well. Yes, that is why we want good authoritarians in charge and not bad ones. The last argument I want to make is to highlight the danger of accelerating the idea of liberty. As I said before, liberty enables degeneracy, so we will get more of it the more liberty we have. Yet, where will the slippery slope of degeneracy take the Western world? That is the question we must answer. Think about it like this. As a society, we have destroyed a lot of our rules with regard to sex. We now have tolerance for many different types of sexual conduct that would have been unacceptable in the past. Never has the so-called, quote, LGBTQ plus, close quote, community been so accepted in recorded history. In 2015, SCOTUS effectively legalized gay marriage, and now 
we have the push to normalize transgender people. If we look at what laws governing sexual conduct we have left, we see the following that I can think of. No animals, children, family members, or dead bodies, and all parties have to consent. These are basically the only laws governing sex we have not gotten rid of. So we must ask the question, if we believe in the ethical necessity of liberty and we have already decided to allow gays to get married in the name of greater liberty, why shouldn't we take it to the next step and the next step and the next? If gays have the right to get married and have sex with each other, then why can't a brother and sister get married and have a kid? Why can't someone do it with their pet? And so on. It is for this reason that moral censorship is justified to protect the morality of society. The licking of manly women's abs is not just about licking women's abs. The promotion of this is part of a larger campaign to attack traditional morality with regard to sexual conduct. The licking of manly women's abs and other less bad forms of degeneracy is a Trojan horse for greater devils to come into the walls of the city. We have already gotten to the point where we have transgender children taking puberty blockers. We have already gotten to the point where we have drag queen children. It is only a matter of time before sexual liberation reaches peak insanity, and we all know what I mean by that. If we don't stop people from doing the transgender stuff, i.e. taking people's liberty away, then how do we stop this? And the world's getting kinder, Gen Z's gayer than grinder. Learn to love, learn to vogue, face your face. your children someone's gotta teach them not to hate